Hare Krishna, everybody. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, where we're taking a mystical journey through the history of the universe, through the teachings of Shukadeva Goswami and Narada Muni and Lord Brahma and 12, 12 Mahajans and so many other uh, exalted personalities through the lens of Srila Prabhupada's ecstasy. So, welcome aboard. Those of you who are always with us, welcome back. Those of you who are just tuning in, welcome aboard. And don't forget to share the nectar with those you love and so they can taste this nectar themselves. We have a wonderful uh, group of uh, sadhus here. Uh, Joaquin is with us for the first time for the reading, but we've had a meeting before. One of Nitya's protégés. She's doing her thing, as usual, perfectly. And uh, our family is growing. Okay. Sanatana Goswami, speaking of family, <coughs> he's Lord Chaitanya's senior disciple and uh, spiritual family to us. Um, he wrote Srimad Bhagavata Mihima Stotram, Glorification of the Bhagavatam, and <clears throat> it's a wonderful prayer, and it teaches us how deep the Bhagavatam is and opens up our, expands our consciousness and hopefully our ability to hear deeper and deeper because the Bhagavatam has many layers of potential understanding. It's Krishna, and Krishna will reveal to us himself to the degree that we are receptive. Uh, that receptivity de depends on our faith, the depth of our faith, and the strength of our faith. So, uh, reading this every day from Sanatana Goswami will connect us with one who has uh, among the most faith of Lord Chaitanya's followers. It goes like this. Sarva Shastra Dipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kalidvan Dodita Ditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prima Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Shri Krishna Himself. Marika Bando Mat Sangin Mat Guru Mat Mahadana Mat Nistadaka Mat Bhagya Mat Ananda Namostute. My only friend my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin atini chochatakada hanamun chagadachin mam prem narit kantayospura O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, Please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 All right, we're going deeper into uh, the pastime of Vamanadev. We're, we've reached chapter 20. <coughs> Vamanadev has, is in the process of tricking Bali Maharaj, and Bali Maharaj's 
so-called spiritual master. He's a spiritual master, but he's a cool, we call him Kula Gurus. Kula Gurus. He's family spiritual master in bloodline. And uh, he's trying to talk Bali Maharaj out of it. Because if he surrenders everything to Vishnu, then he'll lose everything. And Sri will lose his support, maybe. So that's where we leave, that's where we left off. Okay. Chapter 20. Bali Maharaj surrenders the universe. We don't have the universe to surrender, so you can get an idea of how big a deal this is. <coughs> <coughs> the summary of this 20th chapter is as follows. Despite his knowledge that Vamanadev was cheating him, Bali Maharaj gave everything to the Lord in charity. And thus the Lord extended his body and assumed a gigantic form as Lord Vishnu. After hearing the instructive advice of Shukracharya, Bali Maharaj became contemplative because it is the duty of a householder to maintain the principles of religion, economic development, and sense gratification. Bali Maharaj thought it improper to withdraw his promise to a brahmachari. Oh, to lie or fail to honor a promise given to a brahmachari is never proper. <coughs> for lying is the most sinful activity. Notice the Trump. Everyone should be afraid of the sinful reactions to lying. For Mother Earth cannot even bear the weight of a sinful liar. The spreading of a kingdom or empire is temporary. If there is no benefit for the general public, such expansion has no value. <clears throat> Previously, all the great kings and emperors expanded their kingdoms with a regard for the welfare of the people in general. Indeed, while engaged in such activities for the benefit of the general public, eminent men sometimes even sacrificed their lives. It is said that one who is glorious in his activities is always living and never dies. Therefore, fame should be the aim of life. And even if one becomes poverty-stricken for the sake of a good reputation, that is not a loss. Bali Maharaj thought that even if his, this brahmachari, Brahmadev, <laughs> were Lord Vishnu, if the Lord accepted his charity and then again arrested him, Bali Maharaj would not envy him. Considering all these points, Bali Maharaj finally gave in charity everything he possessed. Lord Vamanadev then immediately extended himself into a universal body. By the mercy of Lord Vamanadev, Bali Maharaj could see that the Lord is all-pervading and that everything rests in his body. Bali Maharaj could see Lord Vamanadev as the supreme Vishnu, wearing a helmet, a yellow garment, the, the mark of Srivats, and the coast of a jewel, a flower garland, and ornaments decorating his entire body. The Lord gradually covered the entire surface of the world and by extending his body, he covered the entire sky. With his hands, he covered all directions and with a second footstep, he covered the entire upper planetary system. Therefore, there was no vacant place where he could put his third footstep. Hare Krishna. Text 1. Sri Shukadeva Goswami said, <clears throat> O King Prikshit, when Bali Maharaj was thus advised by his spiritual master, Shukracharya, his family priest, he remained silent for some time. And then, after full deliberation, he replied to his spiritual master as follows. Purport. Srila Vishwanath Jagavari Thakur remarks that Bali Maharaj remained silent at a critical point. How could he disobey the instruction of Shukracharya, his spiritual master. It is the duty of such a sober personality as Bali Maharaj to abide by the orders of his spiritual master immediately, as his spiritual master has, had advised. But Bali Maharaj also considered 
that Shukracharya was no longer to be accepted as a spiritual master, for he had deviated from the duty of a spiritual master. According to Shastra, the duty of the guru is to take the disciple back home, back to Godhead. If he is unable to do so and instead hinders the disciple in going back to Godhead, he should not be a guru. Gurur nasasyat. Bhagavatam 5.5.18 One should not become a guru if he cannot enable his disciple to advance in Krishna consciousness. The goal of life is to become a devotee of Lord Krishna so that one may be freed from the bondage of material existence. Tyaktva deham punarjanma naitimam itisorjana The spiritual master helps the disciple attain this stage by developing Krishna consciousness. Now, Shukracharya has advised Bali Maharaj to deny the promise to Vamanadev. Under the, under the circumstances, therefore, Bali Maharaj thought that there would be no fault if he disobeyed the order of his spiritual master. He deliberated on this point. Should he accept the advice of his spiritual master? And should he independently do everything to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead? He took some time. Therefore it, it is said, Tushnim Bhutva Chanam Rajan Avacha Bahito Gurum. After deliberating on this point, he decided that Lord Vishnu should be pleased in all circumstances, even at the risk of, even at the risk of ignoring the Guru's advice to the contrary. Anyone who is supposed to be a guru but who goes against the principle of Vishnu Bhakti cannot be accepted as guru. If one has falsely accepted such a guru, one should reject him. Such a guru is described as follows, Mahabharat Shanti Parva, 57.7, Gurur Apyavaliptasya Karya Karya Ajanataha Utpata Pratipanasya Parityago Bidiyate. Srila Jiva Goswami has advised that such a useless guru, a family priest acting as guru, should be given up, and that the proper bona fide guru should be accepted. Shat karma nipuno vipro mantra tantra bisharadaha avaishnavo guru nasyat vaishnavat chapacho guru hu. A scar scholarly brahmana expert in all subjects of Vedic knowledge, is unfit to become a spiritual master without becoming a Vaishnava. But if a person born in a family of a lower caste is a Vaishnava, he can become a spiritual master. Padma Purana. Text 2. Bali Maharaj said, <clears throat> As you have already stated, the principle of religion that does not hinder one's economic development sense gratification, fame, and means of livelihood is the real occupational duty of the householder. I also think that this religious principle is correct. Purport. Bali Maharaja's grave answer to Shukracharya is meaningful. Let's hear that answer again, because this is pretty deep. Bali Maharaj said, as you have already stated, the principle of religion that does not hinder one's economic development, sense gratification, fame, and means of livelihood is the real occupational duty of a householder. I also think that this religious principle is correct. Purport. Bali Maharaja's grave answer to Shukracharya is meaningful. Shukracharya stressed that one's material means of livelihood and one's material reputation, sense gratification, and economic development must continue properly. To see to this is the first duty of a man who is a householder, especially one who is interested in material affairs. If a religious principle does not affect one's material condition, it is to be accepted. At the present time in this age of Kali, this idea is extremely prominent. No one is prepared to accept any religious principle if it hampers material prosperity. Shukracharya, being a person of this material world, did not know the principles of a devotee. A devotee is determined to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
to his full satisfaction. That's it, capital his, that means to Krishna's full satisfaction. Anything that hampers <coughs> such determination should certainly be rejected. This is the principle of bhakti. Anukul yasya sankalpa pratikul yasya varjanam CC Madhya 22, 100. To perform devotional service, one must accept only that which is favorable and reject that which is unfavorable. Bali Maharaj had the opportunity to contribute everything he possessed to the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev, but Shukracharya was putting forward a material argument to hamper <coughs> this process of devotional service. Under the circumstances, Bali Maharaj decided that such hindrances should certainly be avoided. In other words, he decided immediately to reject the advice of Shukracharya and go on with his duty. Thus he gave all his possessions to Lord Vamanadev. Just a side question to Prana. Did you get the, in, the, the message from, uh, from Sham Kishore in London? Mm -hmm. You did? Okay, okay, good. <coughs> Text 3. I am the grandson of Maharaj Prahlad. How can I withdraw my promise because of greed for money when I have already said that I shall give this land? How can I behave like an ordinary cheater, especially toward a Brahmana? Purport. Bali Maharaj had already been, already been blessed by his grandfather, Prahlad Maharaj. Therefore, he was a pure devotee, although born in a family of demons. There are two kinds of highly elevated devotees, called Sadhana Siddha and Kripa Siddha. Sadhana Siddha refers to one who has become a devotee by regular execution of the regulative principles mentioned in the Shastras, as ordered and directed by the spiritual master. If one regularly executes such devotional service, he will certainly attain perfection in due course of time. But there are other devotees who may not have undergone all the required details of devotional service, but who, by the special mercy of Guru and Krishna, the spiritual master and the supreme personality of Godhead, have immediately attained the perfection of pure devotional service. Examples of such devotees are the Yajyapatis, Patnis, Maharaj Bali, and Shukadev Goswami. The Yajyapatnis were the wives of ordinary Brahmanas engaged in fruitive activities. Although the Brahmanas were very learned and advanced in Vedic knowledge, they could not achieve the mercy of Krishna Balaram, whereas their wives achieved complete perfection in devotional service, despite their being women. Similarly, Vairochani, Bali Maharaj, received the mercy of Prahlad Maharaj, and by Prahlad Maharaj's mercy, he also received the mercy of Lord Vishnu, who appeared before him as a brahmachari beggar. Thus, Bali Maharaj became a Kripa Siddha because of the special mercy of both Guru and Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirms this favor. Guru Krishna Prasadi Poi Bhakti Lata Bij. CC Madhya 19.151. Bali Maharaj, by the grace of Prahlad Maharaj, got the seed of devotional service. And when that seed developed, he achieved the ultimate fruit of that service, namely love of Godhead. Prema Pumarta Mahan. Immediately upon the appearance of Lord, Lord Vamanadev, Bali Maharaj regularly maintained devotion for the Lord. And because he was purified, the Lord appeared before him. Because of unalloyed love for the Lord, he then immediately decided, I shall give this little dwarf Brahmana whatever he asks from me. This is a sign of love. Thus, Bali Maharaj is understood to be one who received the highest perfection of devotional service by special mercy. Text 4 
There is nothing more sinful than untruthfulness. Because of this, Mother Earth once said, I can bear any heavy thing except a person who is a liar. Purport. On the surface of the earth there are great, many great mountains and oceans that are very heavy and Mother Earth has no difficulty carrying them. But she feels very much overburdened when she carries even one person who is a liar. It is said that in Kali Yuga, lying is a common affair. Mayaiva, Vya, Baha, Dike, Bhagavatam 1, 12, 2, 3. Even in the most common dealings, people are accustomed to speaking so many lies. No one is free from the sinful reactions of speaking lies. Under the circumstances, one can just imagine how this has overburdened the earth and indeed the entire universe. Let that sink in for a second. Hare Krishna. Text 5. I do not fear hell, poverty, an ocean of distress, fall down from my position, or even death itself, as much as I fear cheating a brahmana. Text 6. My Lord, you can also see that all the material opulences of this world are certainly separated from their possessor at death. Therefore, if the Brahman of Vamanadev is not satisfied by whatever gifts one has received, why not please him with the riches one is destined to lose at death? <laughs> Purport. The word Vipra means Brahmana and at the same time confidential. Bali Maharaj had confidentially decided to give the gift to Lord Vamanadev without discussion. But because such a decision would hurt the hearts of the Asuras and his spiritual master, Shukracharya, he spoke equivocally. Bali Maharaj, as a pure devotee, already had decided to give all the land to, to Lord Vishnu. Text 7. Dadichi, Shibi, and many other great personalities were willing to sacrifice even their lives for the benefit of the people in general. This is the evidence of history. So why not give up this insignificant land? What is the serious consideration against it? Purport. Bali Maharaj was prepared to give everything to Lord Vishnu and Shukracharya, being a professional priest, might have been anxiously waiting, doubting whether there had been any such instance in history in which one had given everything in charity. Bali Maharaj, however, cited the tangible examples of Maharaj Shibi and Maharaj Didichi, who had given up their lives for the benefit of the general public. Certainly one has attachments for everything material, especially one's land, but land and other possessions are forcibly taken away at the time of death, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, Mrityu Sarva Harash Chaham. The Lord personally appeared to Bali Maharaj to take everything, take away everything he had, and thus he was so fortunate that he could see the Lord face to face. Non-devotees, however, cannot see the Lord face to face. To such persons, the Lord appears as death and takes away all their possessions by force. Under the circumstances, why should we not part with our possessions and deliver them to Lord Vishnu for his satisfaction? Sri Chaniki Pandit says in this regard, San nimite varam tyago vinashe niyate sati Janacha Sloka 36 <clears throat> Since our money and possessions do not last but will somehow or other be taken away as long as they are in our possession. It is better to use them for charity to a noble cause. Therefore, Bali Maharaj defied the order of his so-called spiritual master. Text 8. 
O best of the Brahmanas, certainly the great demoniac kings who were never reluctant to fight enjoyed this world. But in due course of time, everything they had was taken away except their reputation by which they continue to exist. In other words, one should try to achieve a good reputation instead of anything else. Purport. In this regard, Chanakya Pandit, Chanakya Shloka 34, also says, Ayushak chana eko pi na labya swarna koti bihi. The duration of one's life is extremely short, but if in that short lifetime one can do something that enhances his good reputation, that may continue to exist for millions of years, that may continue to exist for many millions of years. Bali Maharaj therefore decided not to follow his spiritual master's instruction that he deny his promise to Bhamanadev. Instead, he decided to give the land according to the promise and be everlastingly celebrated as one of the twelve Mahajans. Bali Bhaya Sakir Bayam. Text 9. O best of the Brahmanas, many men have laid down their lives on the battlefield, being unafraid of fighting, but rarely has one gotten the chance to give his accumulated wealth faithfully to a saintly person who creates holy places. Purport. Many Chetriyas have laid down their lives on the battlefield for their nations, but hardly a person can be found who has given up all his property and has accumulated wealth in charity to a person worthy of a gift of the gift. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 17.20, Datavyam Ityadanam Diyate Nupakarine Deshe Kale Chapatre Cha Tadanam Sat Bikam Smitam. That gift which is given out of duty at the proper time and place to a worthy person and without expectation of return is considered to be charity in the mode of goodness. Thus charity given in the proper place is called sattvika. And above this charity in goodness is transcendental charity in which everything is sacrificed for the sake of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vamanadev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, had come to Bali Maharaj for alms. <laughs> <clears throat> How could one get such an opportunity to give charity? Therefore, Bali Maharaj decided without hesitation to give the Lord whatever he wanted. One may get various opportunities to lay down his life on the battlefield, but such an opportunity as this is hardly ever obtained. Text 10. By giving charity... A benevolent and merciful person undoubtedly becomes even more auspicious, especially when he gives charity to a person like your good self. Under the circumstances, I must give this little brahmachari whatever charity he wants from me. After all, it's only three steps of land and his legs are very short. He can only step this far. Purport. If one accepts a poverty-stricken position because of losing money in business, gambling, prostitution, or intoxication, no one will praise him. But if one becomes poverty-stricken by giving up all his possessions in charity, he becomes adored all over the world. Aside from this, if a benevolent and merciful person exhibits his pride in becoming poverty-stricken, <laughs> By giving his possessions in charity for good causes, his poverty is a welcome and auspicious sign of a great personality. Bali Maharaj, by giving, Bali Maharaj decided that even though he would become poverty-stricken by giving everything to Vamanadev, this is what he would prefer. Text 11. O oh, great sage, Great personalities like you, being completely aware of the Vedic principles for performing ritualistic ceremonies and yagyas, 
worship Lord Vishnu in all circumstances. <clears throat> Therefore, whether that same Lord Vishnu has come here to give me all benedictions or to punish me as an enemy, I must carry out his order and give him the requested tract of land without hesitation. Purport. As stated by Lord Shiva, Aradhananam sarvesham Vishnur Aradhanam Param Tasmat Paratanam Devi Vidiyanam Samarcharam Padma Purana. Although in the Vedas <coughs> there are recommendations for worshipping many demigods, Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Person, and worship of Vishnu is the ultimate goal of life. The Vedic principles of the Varnasham institution are meant to organize society to prepare everyone <coughs> to worship Lord Vishnu. Varnashama Charavata Purushena Padak Puman Vishnur Aradyate Panta Nanyat Tat Toshitkaranam The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, is wor worshipped by the proper execution of prescribed duties <coughs> in the system of Varna and Ashram. There is no other way <coughs> to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vishnu Purana 389. <clears throat> One must ultimately worship Lord Vishnu <clears throat> and for that purpose <clears throat> The Varnashram system organizes <coughs> society into Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras, Brahmacharis, Grihastas, Vanaprastas, and Sannyasis. <coughs> Bali Maharaj, having been perfectly educated in devotional service by his grandfather, Pallad Maharaj, knew how things are to be done. He was never to be misguided by anyone, even by a person who happened to be his so-called spiritual master. This is the sign of full surrender. Let me repeat that. <clears throat> Bali Maharaj, <clears throat> having been perfectly educated in devotional service <clears throat> by his grandfather, Prahlad Maharaj, <clears throat> knew how things are to be done. He was never to be misguided by anyone, even by a person who happened to be a so-called spiritual master. This is the sign of full surrender. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Marabi rakabi yo ichya tohara nitya dasa pratituya adhikara When one surrenders to Lord Vishnu, one must be prepared to abide by his orders in all circumstances, whether he kills one or gives one protection. Lord Vishnu must be worshipped in all circumstances. <clears throat> and again, this he is in capital. This he does not refer back to the one surrendering to Lord Vishnu. It refers back to Lord Vishnu. I'll read it again. <clears throat> when one surrenders to Lord Vishnu, one must be prepared <clears throat> to abide by his orders in all circumstances. <clears throat> Whether one kills one or gives one protect, whether Krishna kills one or gives one protection, Lord Vishnu must be worshipped in all circumstances. Text 12. Although he is Vishnu himself, out of fear he has covered himself in the form of a Brahmana to come, me, to, to, come to me begging. Under the circumstances, because he has assumed the form of a Brahmana, even if he irreligiously arrests me or even kills me, I shall not retaliate, although he is my enemy. Purport. If Lord Vishnu, as he is, had come to Bali Maharaj and asked him to do something, Bali Maharaj certainly would not have refused his request. But to enjoy a little humor between himself and his devotee, the Lord himself as the Brahman of Brahmachari, and thus covered himself as a Brahman of Brahmachari, and thus came to Bali Maharaj to beg for only three feet of land. <laughs> 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 it's 
sense of humor. <coughs> Text 13. <coughs> if this Brahmana really is Lord Vishnu, who is worshipped by Vedic hymns, he would never give up his widespread reputation. Either he would lie down, either he would lie down having been killed by me, or he would fight me in a fight, or he, or he would kill me in a fight. Purport. Bali Maharaja's statement that Vishnu would lie down having been killed is not the direct meaning, for Vishnu cannot be killed by anyone. Lord Vishnu can kill everyone, but he cannot be killed. This, thus the real meaning of the word lie down is that Lord Vishnu would reside within the core of Bali Maharaja's heart. Lord Vishnu is defeated by devotee through devotional service, otherwise no one can defeat Lord Vishnu. I'm going to read this purport again. It's short, but it's really sweet. It's deep. Bali Maharaja's statement that Vishnu would lie down having been killed is not the direct meaning. For Vishnu cannot be killed by anyone. Lord Vishnu can kill everyone, but he cannot be killed. Thus, the real meaning of the words lie down is that Lord Vishnu <coughs> would reside within the core of Bali Maharaja's heart. Lord Vishnu is defeated by a devotee through devotional service. Otherwise, no one can defeat Lord Vishnu. Text 14. Such a nice way to spend a codice hearing this. No? <laughs> Shukadeva Goswami said, continued, <clears throat> Therefore, the spiritual master Shukracharya, being inspired by the Supreme Lord, cursed his exalted disciple, Bali Maharaj, who was so magnanimous and fixed in truthfulness that instead of respecting his spiritual master's instructions, he wanted to disobey his order. Purport. The difference between the behavior of Bali Maharaj and that of his spiritual master, Shukracharya, was that Bali Maharaj had already developed love of Godhead, whereas Shukracharya, being merely a priest of routine rituals, had not. Thus, Shukracharya was never inspired by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to develop in devotional service. As stated by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita 10.10, Tesham Sadata Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamam Upayantite To those who are constantly devoted, to, work, to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Devotees who actually engage in devotional service with faith and love are inspired by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> Vaishnavas are never concerned with ritualistic smarta brahmanas. Srila Sanatana Goswami has therefore compiled Hari Bhakti Vilas to guide the Vaishnavas who never follow the smarta vidi. Although the Supreme Lord is situated in the core of everyone's heart, unless one is a Vaishnava, unless one is engaged in devotional service, one does not get sound advice by which to return home back to Godhead. Such instructions are meant only for devotees. Therefore, in this verse, the word daiva prahita, being inspired by the Supreme Lord, is important. Shukracharya should have encouraged Bali Maharaj to give everything to Lord Vishnu. This would have been a sign of love for the Supreme Lord, but he did not do so. On the contrary, he wanted to punish his devoted disciple by cursing him. Oh. Hare Krishna. Bali Maharaj ki jai. <clears throat> Text 15. Although you have no knowledge, you have become a so-called learned person, and therefore you dare be so impudent as to disobey my order. Because of disobeying me, you shall soon, very soon, be bereft of all your opulence. <laughs> it was a blessing. <laughs> it was supposed to be a curse. <laughs> it turned out to be a blessing. 
purport. <coughs> Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that Bali Maharaj was not Pandita Mani or one who falsely assumes himself learned. Rather, he was Pandita Manyagya, one who was so learned that all other learned persons worship him. And because he was so learned, he could disobey the order of his so-called spiritual master. He had no fear of any condition of material existence. Anyone cared for by Lord Vishnu does not need to care about anyone else. Thus, Bali Maharaj could never be bereft of all opulences. The opulences offered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead are not to be compared to the opulences obtained by karma kanda. In other words, if a devotee becomes very opulent, it is to be understood that his opulence is a gift of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such opulence will never be vanquished, whereas the opulence achieved by one's fruit of activity may be vanquished at any moment. Text 16 Shukadev Goswami continued, After being cursed in this way by his own spiritual master, Bali Maharaj, being a great personality, never devi deviated from his determination. Therefore, according to custom, he first offered water to Vamanadev and then offered him the gift of land he had promised. Text 17 Bali Maharaja's wife, known as Vinyavali, Vinyavali, who was decorated with a necklace of pearls, immediately came and had a large golden water pot brought there, full of water with which to worship the Lord by washing his feet. Real wife. Text 18. Bali Maharaj, the worshipper of Lord Vamanadev, jubilantly washed the Lord's lotus feet and then took the water on his head, for that water delivers the entire universe. Text 19. At that time, the residents of the higher planetary system, namely the demigods, the Gandharvas, the Bidyadras, the Siddhas, and the Charanas, all being very pleased by Bali Maharaja's simple, non-duplicitous act, praised his qualities and showered upon him millions of flowers. Purport Arjavam, simplicity, or freedom from duplicity is a qualification of a Brahmana and a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava automatically acquires all the qualities of a Brahmana. Yasyasti bhaktir bhagavat yakinchana sarvair gunais tatra samasate suraha Bhagavatam 5.18.12 A Vaishnava should possess the Brahminical qualities such as satya, shama, Dhamma, Titiksha, and Arjava. There cannot be any duplicity in the character of a Vaishnava. When Bali Maharaj acted with unflinching faith and devotion under the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu, this was very much appreciated by all the residents of the higher planetary system. Thanks. Let me go turn off the alarm. It happens all the time here. Somebody downstairs doesn't know how to work it. Anyway, text 20. The Gandharvas, the Kimpurushas, and the Kinaras sounded thousands and thousands of kettle drums and trumpets again and again, and they sang in great jubilation, declaring how exalted a person is Bali Maharaj and what a difficult task he has performed. Even though he knew that Lord Vishnu was on the side of his enemies, he nonetheless gave the Lord the entire three worlds in charity. Thank you. Text 21 The unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead who had assumed the form of Vamana then began increasing in size acting in terms of the material energy until everything in the universe was within his body including the earth the planetary systems the sky the directions the various holes in the universe, 
the seas, ah, black holes, the various holes in the universe, the seas, the oceans, the birds, beasts, human beings, the demigods, and the great saintly persons. Purport. Bali Maharaj wanted to give <coughs> charity to Vamanadev, but the Lord expanded his body in such a way that he showed Bali Maharaj that everything in the universe is actually in his body. <coughs> actually, no one can give anything to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for he is full in everything. Sometimes we see a devotee offering Ganges water to the Ganges. After taking his bath in the Ganges, a devotee takes a palm full of water and offers it back to the Ganges. Actually, when one takes a palm full of water from the Ganges, the Ganges does not lose anything. <clears throat> and similarly, if a devotee offers a palm full of water to the Ganges, the Ganges does not increase in any way. <clears throat> <clears throat> but by such an offering, the devotee becomes celebrated as a devotee of Mother Ganges. Similarly, when we offer anything with devotion and faith, what we offer does not belong to us, nor does it enrich the opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But if one offers whatever he has in his possession, he becomes a recognized devotee. In this regard, the example is given that when one's face is decorated with a garland and sandalwood pulp, the reflection of one's face in the mirror automatically becomes beautiful. The, the original source of everything is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is our original source also. Therefore, when the Supreme Personality of Godhead is decorated, the devotees and all living entities are decorated automatically. Text 22. Bali Maharaj, <clears throat> along with all the priests, acharyas, and members of the assembly, observed the Supreme Personality of Godhead's universal body, which was full in six opulences. That body contained everything within the universe, including all the gross material elements, the senses, the sense objects, the mind, intelligence, and false ego, <clears throat> the various kinds of living entities, and the actions and reactions of the three modes of material nature. Purport. <clears throat> In Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Personality of Godhead says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo, Matak Sarvam Prabhartate. Krishna is the origin of everything. Vasudeva Sarvamiti. Krishna is everything. Matstani Sarvabhutani. Nachaham Teshavastitaha. Everything rests in the body of the Lord, yet the Lord is not everywhere. Mayavadi philosophers think that since the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth has become everything. He has no separate existence. Their philosophy is called Advaitavad. Actually, however, their philosophy is not correct. Here, Bali Maharaj was the seer of the Personality of Godhead's universal body, and that body was that which was seen. Thus, there is, a, there is Dvaitavad. There are always two entities the seer and the seen. The seer is a part of the whole, but he is not equal to the whole. The part of the whole, the seer, is also one with the whole, but since he is but a part, he cannot be the complete whole at any time. Transcendental physics. <laughs> Right, Marcus? <clears throat> this achintya beda beda, simultaneous oneness and difference, is the perfect philosophy propounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki. Chaitanya. Text 
Thereafter, Bali Maharaj, who was occupying the seat of King Indra, <coughs> could see the lower planetary systems, such as Rasatala, on the soles of the feet of the Lord's universal form. He saw on the Lord's feet the surface of the globe, on the surface of his calves, all the mountains, on his knees, the various birds, and on his thighs, the varieties of air. Purport. The universal situation is described herein in regard to the complete constitution of the Lord's gigantic universal form. The study of this universal form begins from the soul. That's O-L-E, not O-U-L. Above the soles are the feet. Above the feet are the calves. Above the calves are the knees, and above the knees are the thighs. Thus the parts of the universal body, one after another, are described herein. The knees are the places of birds, and above that are, the vari are varieties of air. The birds can fly over the mountains, and above the birds are varieties of air. Prabhupada, poet, extraordinaire, masterpiece at explaining the most complex thoughts in such simple language that even a child can understand. And these big philosophers, they'll talk and talk and talk, and you can't understand a word they're saying. And people think, you have to study this guy, because he must be more intelligent than me, because I can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> and thus the whole world has become bewildered by the Mayavad philosophy. Word jugglery. They can't, under they can't accept a simple thing. They can't be God. Who can be God except for God? Okay, we'll stop here. Hare Krishna. 533. I'll start off. <coughs> you know, I was thinking while well, this section is so succinct and beautiful and revealing philosophy about what is truth and what is not truth, you know, uh, was being expounded. I was thinking that, you know, not that long ago we were, we were listening to the genealogical tables, you know, this one begot this one, and that one begot this one, and this one begot this one. And each one of those personalities were very exalted person, and the sound of their names, you know, take us places, or can, depending on our level of surrender. But then, it's like drama, you know, there's, in a, in a really expert drama, there'll be, you know, a tense scene, and all of a sudden there'll be some comedy. You know, everybody gets relieved, and then again it goes to the tent, isn't it? Uh, the, the, the way of real drama. <coughs> in the Brihat Bhagavatamrita, there's a uh, yeah, there's a section in which there was a debate between Lord Balaram and some of the Dwarkavasis who were criticizing the Brajvasis and back and forth, they were going back and forth and it got so intense, you know and then all of a sudden Krishna came out and said something and then the whole atmosphere just became one time Prabhupada was uh, Satsrup Maharaj was his secretary this was in Vrindavan and uh, Prabhupada had written a letter and had put an enclosure in the bottom, enclosed, and in the letter said, you know, this is, this one. and then the secretary was supposed to put the enclosure in and said the letter. So then a little, a little later, Prabhupada got a letter back from the person asking him where was the enclosure. Prabhupada immediately called Satsuma up in the room and he said, Satsuma told me this personally, and he said, so, uh, why was not the enclosure in that letter? And Sasha much. He, first of all, he didn't know what he was talking about. And then it gradually became, you know, dawned on him, oh my God. And then he remembered that he forgot. And he said, oh, Prabhupada, I forgot to put it in. He said, why did you forget to put it in? He said, Prabhupada, I'm a fool. Why are you a fool? <laughs> because he just kept going on and on and on. He didn't stop. I don't remember all the things he said, but it, was, it went on for a long time. And at one point, Satsuruk just started to cry. And he told me, he said, I felt like I just melted down. Like I, 
like he just dismantled my my existence. My ego was just being torn apart. And all of a sudden, Prabhupada he was seem angry. He seemed like the whole room was like pulsating, you know. And then Satsvarup Maharaj just all of a sudden, because he's a very honest person, he said, Prabhupada, I'll write a letter to him and I'll explain to him that that was my fault. I should have put it in, but and then I'll, you know, send the closure. Then Prabhupada just said, okay. And the, everything changed, he said. It was like instantaneously things changed and Prabhupada was laughing and smiling. and it, You know, and Prabhupada <laughs> was, just, was just dumbfounded. He was... In, India, in England, they say gobsmacked. <laughs> gobsmacked. That means when you just, what? <laughs> you can't express it. That's how I felt when I was reading this. It's just so profound. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm hogging the show. Open mic. Your turn. Jai Shri, give her the mic, quick. <coughs> when I read the verse in uh, text 12, it said, uh, but to enjoy a little humor between himself and his devotee, the Lord covered himself as a Brahmana Brahmachari, and thus came to ba Bali Maharaj to beg for only three feet of land. It showed, actually, when I was reading this, it's, it's very profound philosophy, as you say, Guru Maharaj. But at the same time, actually, the Lord presented all this philosophy in a very humorous way. Yeah, he presented himself as a as a dwarf, as a Brahma, Brahmana, and so lovely, and everyone cannot refuse him. But he, that they are they are doing the drama in a very, in a very inconceivable way, actually, yeah. beyond our ima imagination. Yes, and it also shows the humor of the Lord, yes. <laughs> which is very inconceivable for for ordinary people. Absolutely. Yeah, and in text thirteen, the Lord also he mentioned in the purport. Uh, the real meaning of the word lie down is that Lord Vishnu would mm. reside within the core of Bali Maharaj heart. Lord Vishnu is defeated by a devotee through devotional service. Otherwise, no one can defeat Lord Vishnu. It's so sweet. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> that's also when why I thought of that, I would heard that I reminded me of that, that time that Krishna decided to go inside, you know, Hiranyakashipu, remember? Yeah. And then so Hiranyakashipu could say, this Vishnu, he must be have gone to the boat of death because I can't find him anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, very sweet. <coughs> very sweet. You want? Joaquin, please. Oh, no, I'll be our that. guest, please. Oh, oh. He's there. Take the. I'm, st I'm still looking for um, my question here. I have, I have something, but just give me a couple. Minutes. Okay, okay. Take your time. Take your time. Dr. Dr. Dumbledore. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. The the word which the sentence which uh, kind of confused me and I need little uh, purport of this purport about the word used couple of times so called spiritual master and uh, I mean to say this is the first time I think in the discourse I am hearing this word so called spiritual master so how to make sense of it the explanation given that Bali Maharaj has been educated by Prahlad Maharaj so he can distinguish and reject the suggestion but <coughs> <coughs> well, the, the meaning is that <coughs> you cannot actually accept the spiritual master unless you know enough about what the spiritual master is supposed to teach. We're supposed to select the spiritual master based on what he says and the effect that that knowledge has on one's heart. We're not supposed to select the spiritual master by an ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical convention or by social pressure. Sometimes 
in a, in a large community, <coughs> all the de- most of the devotees will be the, asso- the, the disciple of, of one particular guru or another, and then another per- new person comes in, and they all put the heat on. When are you going to get initiated? When are you going to initiate it? When are you going to initiate it? <laughs> guru Maharaj is waiting for you. You know, it's like, uh, you know. And uh <coughs> but a person has to actually accept the spiritual master based on um, conviction and faith based on knowledge. So what it means by so-called spiritual master is Shukachari was in the role of a spiritual master, no doubt. But because his um he's not a, he's not a pure Vaishnava. He's not a pure Vaishnava. So you can be a spiritual master, you can be a Kula Guru. There was uh, one of my very good friends in uh, the whole family and many people in Jaipur. I don't remember the, the Guru's name, but he's a very famous Kula Guru. And, uh, you know, he, he initiates all these people in these, this group of social families and connected people, you know, and they all go to him to get blessings for prosperity, you know. And uh, even after he met the devotees and accepted, you know, Tamakrishna Maharaj, he met him and he accepted him. Giri Hari Maharaj, he met him in Hong Kong. Actually, Meena, the daughter of Shama Sunda Katoria, met uh, Tamakrishna Maharaj and Giri Maharaj in, Giri Maharaj in mm-hmm. Hong Kong. Yeah. And he ended up being very instrumental in us getting good prices exceptional prices and really good artisans to do different kind of crafts and arti- artistic work, you know, in Jaipur. So I used to go back and forth all the time. So uh, where was I going? Even though he accepted the Yes. So, and even though he left, when the, when the, when the, la- when the, when the spiritual master left, and even though he act, he's a pure devotee of Govindaji. He's there every single day, and like so many people in, in, in Jaipur, you know, there are special devotees there. If you go there, they, they, they don't need kirtan leaders. They all spontaneously know the prayers, and they just chant them all together. <laughs> it, it's amazing, and they can just uplift you. And like, yeah. But he still goes every day, and I, when I go there, I, I go with him you know, to the morning program, and he takes me in his car, and they, we go to this around this bend, and then he we, he stops there, and they go. He and his wife go out to, to his Kuru Guru, Guru's place, and they go and they you know touch the thing, and then they go inside and like that, they come back. So he's definitely acting as spiritual master on some level, but he wasn't a pure Vaishnava, and when he heard Krishna consciousness from Srila Prabhupada's teachings, then he became, you know, a devotee of Srila Prabhupada a real guru, a real spiritual master who could take him back to Godhead. But still, he has a function in his life, so he did that. But of course, the, if, if this, in that we say so-called guru, now in this pastime, I mean, I don't want to bore everyone by saying the same thing that we just heard in such eloquent way. What can I say? You know, I, I find that what we just heard was just complete in itself. But it, it's obvious that if a spiritual ma- is, if a person's in the position of a spiritual master and gives an instruction to a disciple to do something or say something that goes against the instruction of Krishna or Vishnu, then they should be rejected. Then they are a so-called guru. But to the demons, he was still the guru, and he did pretty far out things. But it wasn't a real guru. The real guru takes one back to Godhead. Or te- you know, you know, the, the Bij, Srila Prabhupada defines in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Bhakti Lata Bij, as the instructions, the following of which will take you back to the spiritual world. That's what the Bij is. reject the guru if the guru tells you to break the principles or to you know do something that does not that goes against the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and in our case 
especially. Srila Prabhupada is our founder Acharya. He's given us so many instructions. They're all there in his purports. And if somebody says something that, that you know, contradicts it in a real way that, that causes the heart to close up and loses uh, affection for Vaishnavas and pure devotional service and the deities and these ecstatic scriptures that he gave us, then you can consider it. But notice that even Bali Maharaj thought about it for some time before he made that decision. It's not a light decision. It's a heavy decision. And then what happened? Then the so-called spiritual master came out, came out and cursed him. He, he, his real colors came out. And why did he curse him? Because now Bali Maharaj was not going to be able to maintain him in the opulent way that he's accustomed. Therefore, Bali Maharaj's reputation goes on forever. Um, so I, I have a question. Please, please. We've just been waiting. Thank you. I've been talking here, jowling, waiting for you to ask the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, on uh, text 11, it says. Um, Although in the Vedas there are recommendations for worshipping many demigods, Lord Vishnu is the supreme person and worship of Vishnu is the ultimate goal of life. Um, so my question is, like, is it the context? But aren't, don't we, like, who exactly are we praying towards? Is it Krishna, like, predominantly? And why do we have to pray to towards Lord Vishnu if, if praying to Lord Krishna is enough or should be enough, right? Well, first of all, there's no difference between Krishna and Vishnu. Okay. He's the same person. Sure. The Supreme Person can, is the original form of the Supreme Person is Krishna. Uh, Ishvara, Sarva, uh, uh, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anandir Arya Govinda Sarvakarana Karnam. He's the cause of all causes. He has no other cause. He didn't expand from anyone or anything. But Vishnu expands from him. So, he, and, and an expansion, one of the expansions of Krishna has something to do with the creation of the material world. He doesn't touch it, but his will, by his will and by the transformation of his energy, the material world is is created and his energies create the material world therefore he being non different from his energy as is described in here when sure. when when Bali Maharaj could see the the, the universal form of uh, Vamanadev then he saw everything within the body of Vamanadev that's the principle that's God the supreme controller but Krishna he's above the supreme controller Krishna is the absolute truth he contains everything. Aham Sarvasya Prabhabo, that was quoted in this uh, purport, and along with other verses. He's the source of everything, including Vishnu, including the material energy, including the spiritual, everything. So then, um, and then having that knowledge, is it, what's the correct way to pray? Should we be praying to Vishnu? Now that I know that, or should it be? Or should it be to Krishna? Same. It's the same. same. If you pray to Vishnu or you pray to Krishna, it's the same. It's the same, okay. But there are different moods. Just like a person may have a relationship with the wife, may have a relationship with the child, may have a relationship with the public, may have a relationship with his boss. Let's, let's use an example. Prabhupada sometimes used a high court judge. A high court judge when he walks into the court, you are, what hap courtroom, what happens? Everybody stands up, Your Honor. And whenever they come and say something to him, yes, they have to say, Your Honor. So you, you can imagine the kind of, that make, must make you feel pretty good, you know? But when he goes back home and his wife goes, <laughs> pecks him on the cheek and says, you naughty boy, why didn't you do that? And he's get, he gets another kind of, uh, he gets another kind of happiness that's far beyond the other. So the, this is love is one, 
but the way the, the love is, the love is, it's not that God is love, that's an impersonal concept. To have, for love to exist, there has to be the lover, to be loved, and the exchange, and the love and the exchange. So he loves his son, he loves his wife, he loves the people in the, in the, uh, in the gallery, he loves you know, the government who appointed him. But there are different moods. And Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he inc includes all those moods, all in one person. Therefore, in his abode, in the highest abode, in the spiritual world, by the, by the influence of his own energy, <coughs> he forgets that he's God. <laughs> and not only that, the other persons who are his devoted uh, eternal associates also forget that he's God, even though they know it. Even though they know it. But the sweetness of their spontaneous love just like the love that the people show to man and that he gets from the and the man with his wife is different. You know, it's more intimate, it's more tasty, it's more relishable. So therefore, we worship Krishna because he has all those rasas, he has all those relationships in full. But still, when he expands himself, he's the same person. <clears throat> he has the same potential. Just like when you light a candle flame, <clears throat> there's an original candle flame. Then you light another candle flame and another candle flame. Each one of them has potentially the same candle power, but still there's an original candle flame. That's kind of the essence of it. But, but when Krishna expands himself, he expands himself according to the need of the time, the devotion, the mood. See, when we, when we are in different mood, we just, our same body w does different things. We go, oh, you're, you, you're angry, or you go, oh, no, 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 you're lovey-dovey, or whatever. But when Krishna has a different mood, he has a different form. Same person. This is inconceivable to a materialistic person. Therefore, once you start to understand this, and start to worship Krishna with your full heart. And that's why this is such an important pastime, because Bali Maharaj, although we had the u whole universe, you know, when he decided, he, he knew, he knew, but he acted like he wasn't knowing. And this was like a joke, this was like a joke between God and him. And he knew, because he was trained by Prahlad Maharaj, his grandfather, by his association, he knew. And he knew that if I give him everything, I'll get everything. I'll get him. And he includes everything in, and, and, and then some. Okay, we got a program over the temple and we're going to stop now. And Whoops, oh, someone's online. And you're going to read it from another, you're going to read it from another device. There's always time. You just forgot. <laughs> There's always time. You just have to do it at the right time, and it would have been. Okay, go ahead. Maybe it's going to be okay. This is from Krishna Kata Das. Oh, I just got a letter from Krishna Kata today. He's coming, by the way, for two days this weekend. Or, yeah. He says, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. My reflection is to the purport of verse 21 where there are a couple of nice points Prabhupada makes. First was the offering by the devotee of Mother Ganges and relating it to offering to Krishna anything with love and devotion. Mm. Next is how everyone is decorated automatically when Krishna is decorated. Mm. He says poetic verse by Srila Prabhupada. Mm. And the next mm. is um, Katie Romaya. She says, Maharaj, when did you first meet Srila Prabhupada and what convinced you that he is your guru and you can fully surrender to him as a disciple? What about Srila Prabhupada inspired you the most? Oh man, you know. <laughs> uh, could I put that on hold until tomorrow? <clears throat> I'm going to answer that tomorrow. So Katie, 
you remember to remind me tomorrow to tell you that, and I will. But right now, that's going to take too long. I can tell you two things very short. When I first touched the Bhagavad Gita, which I got from a source, two sources, I got Gita and Ishapanishad within a week of each other while I was on top of a mountain. And I was studying and doing austerities and trying to understand, praying to God in so many ways. Couldn't understand anything. It was just like we were saying before. So many words, so many words, but you can't understand anything. And then I, I took these two books to work one night and I hadn't looked at them, I didn't understand. They just, my wife got one of them. And I put, anyway, I was working nighttime shifts and I brought the books. And I took these two books out of the bag and I looked at them and, and they were of the same author. I said, wait a second, you know, that's not possible. Because one came from my landlady, who was a Christian mystic on living on top of the mountain, who had no interest. And she had gone off and gotten approached by a devotee in the parking lot in the, in the village down below. And my wife got the Gita in, in the interior of Mexico <laughs> in a used bookstore, which was the only book in the English language mm. in the store. Mm. And she's an innocent, simple, simple girl. She says, maybe he's interested in that. He's, he reads these kind of books. OK, I'll get <laughs> So then I, I, I opened it, I looked at it, I said, this is too much. And I began to feel something, something wonderful. And I opened up the Gita, and I just checked, because I had another Gita, but couldn't understand anything. And everything that I read had answered every single question that I had. And I, I finally got to this. I can show you right where it was. It was the abridged version, and all the purports weren't there, but this one was. 9-2. And mm, the end of the purport, Prabhupada says, Thus the process of devotional service or Krishna consciousness is the king of all education and the king of all confidential knowledge. It is the purest form of religion and it can be executed joyfully without difficulty. Therefore, one should adopt it. And I just went, that's it. I'm in. That's it. So then I went up to the place where I was living, got my friend out of, the, out of bed, because my, my childhood friend was living with us. And I said, Clint, I said, we always talked about these so-called spiritual things. I said, what happened to me just now was something out of this world. We have to find out about this. Now, if you, when you first read this book, at least when I read it, I understood that this was the absolute truth instantaneously from lifetimes before. But I couldn't, I didn't understand that Prabhupada, the writer of it, was my spiritual master. Because if you notice, he never says it in this book. His humility is so deep that you don't understand from reading it that he's your personal spiritual master. So anyway, I took the book, we drove 500 miles out of our way to, Cal to San Francisco even though we were 50, 70 miles from Los Angeles. And the magazine we got with the book, where we got the address, was just, uh, on, the, on the cover was the Los Angeles temple devotees with Prabhupada sitting in the center. And it was, it was advertised as the world headquarters. Mm -hmm. But we didn't like LA. Anybody been to LA? Yeah, so you know why we didn't like LA. Very simple. So then, we went there, and when we got to the door of Frederick Street address, there was nothing. It was a boarded up storefront, dead end. And I said, oh my god, what's going on here? And I, I, then I looked four doors up Stanion Street from Frederick. Frederick. I was living there in that place in 1970. And that temple was going on at that time. And then I started to I saw Vishnu Jan Maharaj. And I, re I remember there was something. And then I looked down the street and I saw a devotee passing out magazines. So I ran up to him and I was carrying the Gita in my hand and I said, Hare Krishna, because I had read it in the book. <laughs> and, you know, 
I had a beard down to here and hair down to here, <laughs> and I, I looked like I just came out of a top of a mountain, which I did. <laughs> and and he said, you look like this, you know. Nobody <laughs> can, would come up to you and say, "Hi, Christian." Those days, that was 1972. So he he looked at me and he looked at the book and he said, "Oh, you must have come to hear Sheila Prabhupada speak tonight." And I said, "What do you mean?" Because in, in the original unabridged, abridged version, Prabhupada's name, the word Prabhupada was not on the cover, and it doesn't appear anywhere in the book. So I didn't know what he meant. So I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, the author of that book you're carrying, he just arrived today. I arrived on the same hour. And within just a short time, they took me to the temple, and within the short time, they had a program that night, and I was sitting in front of Prabhupada. And as soon as I saw him come out on the stage, the whole room lit up, literally. Probably because of all the, you know, what I took before. <laughs> <laughs> but, what, but whatever it was, <laughs> whatever it was, I had other people tell me the same thing, so maybe it wasn't just that. <laughs> he just lit up the room, and I just, tears poured out of my eyes, which they also did, by the way, when I got the Gita. Tears poured out of my eyes. I fell flat on the ground like this. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never been to any ceremony, anything, I just fell flat on my ground, wet the, t the floor with my aunt tears. I looked at Prabhupada, and there was my guru standing there. That was it. End of story. <laughs> Beginning of story. <laughs> Beginning of story. Okay, that's all I can have time for. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Vamana Dev ki jai. Chukakarya Sakrachaya ki bu. Although he did bring out the, th the right thing at the end. Yeah. Okay, see you tomorrow at 6.30 p.m., same time, same place, same station. Hare Krishna, have a good one. <laughs>